You can't start a fire. You can't start a fire without a spark. Even if the gun's for hire. Even when it's just dancing in the dark. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> all right, then. Well, someone could confirm it's up. I've got all my monitors full. <laughs> my yep. steam is apparently not that good. No, that was beautiful. All right, welcome back, everybody, to The Shield Against Midnight, a Call of Cthulhu game set in 1969. Uh, our protagonists this evening are a group of CIA agents and their uh, assets currently sort of in undercover on the Vietnamese island of Phu Quoc. There they've received a mysterious dagger and grimoire and are now investigating foreign agents. And by investigating, I mean they beat the crap out of them in the middle of a darkened hallway. And now we'll probably be interrogating them. But, without further ado, let us return to the world of Call of Cthulhu. Gwen, Chase, and Rocket to a lesser extent. You've got two unconscious uh, foreign agents in the middle of a dark uh, hotel hallway. Did we drag them into the room last time? Because I thought we did. I have a memory of that, but I am not 100% sure. <laughs> well, either way, you can drag them in now. It's no big deal. We drag them in. <laughs> we drag them in. I can't actually drag that person. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Gwen telepathically communicates with the higher power to do it for her. The higher power moves the hostages into the hostages' former room. And you'll notice that Rocket is moving a little bit slower getting into the room with a slight whimper. And Gwen would immediately just drop this man like a sack of fucking potatoes and go to the dog and start looking him over. It's... No, go ahead, Chase. I was going to say, um, Chase removes his cincture, which really is just a belt, and cuts it into uh, three pieces and secures them pretty much hand and feet on the ground. All right, roll for former companion. I don't have that skill. <laughs> what? It's, it's, a, it's a 13th age joke. Don't worry about it. Oh, you fucking um, nerd. Anyways, but no, while you're securing the hostages on the floor, it's going to be no big deal whatsoever. Um... Gwen, it's pretty clear that Rocket caught it kind of bad, and you've seen him hurt before, but he, he's clearly injured. Can't tell what, there's no apparent immediate blood, but he's, uh, as soon as he gets in the room, he sits right, he lies right down. He's not, com clearly not comfortable, you know, putting too much weight on his legs. Gwen would be uh, kind of gently running her hands over him and trying to find where a problem is and, and looking uh, increasingly uh, worked up about it. Well, you're going to find a tender spot on the right side of his ribs that he's not very okay with you touching, and he seems to be nursing pretty, uh, pretty heavily. He's not avoiding as much weight on that side of his uh, body as much as he can. Can Chase search these uh, guys for keys, etc., intelligence? Absolutely. That'll be a spot hidden check. Spot hidden with my hands. Well, yes, basically. Unless you want to try to justify something else. Ah! I would help you. Don't have a grope roll. Yeah. I like would I help you out, you... but she's a little preoccupied. Yeah. Yeah, they've yeah, they've dragged their uh their catch into the room with you. Go ahead. Spot hidden unless you want to try and justify another skill. Sleight of hand might work. Hey, I work. thought of that, but I couldn't I wasn't sure if that'd be the best <laughs> choice. <laughs> well Okay. Well, either way. Uh, more or less, you go through the uh, pockets of both uh, uh, the man known as Porter, and he doesn't seem to be carrying anything. After all, he was just roused from bed. He's got nothing important on him. 
Marco, on the other hand, you're going to find um, the keys to his room, as well as a loaded handgun. It's a good thing you knocked him unconscious first before he really had a uh, chance to respond. Uh, nationality and make. Chinese. I'm actually trying to remember because I did the thing again and didn't write down the gun. You really need a secretary. I really do. I'm available for hire. I don't have money. I would totally help, but I'm in the game, so that's kind of cheating. Liam Cat called, by the way. Oh my god. Anyways, it's a Chinese handgun. TT thirty three or TT thirty three. Okay, yeah. yeah. So let's just roll TT thirty three. Is there a round in the chamber? What what condition was it in? No round in the chamber, but it is loaded, full magazine. One spare magazine in his pockets. Uh, Chase uh, pulls the slide back to the chamber around, puts the safety on, and hands it to Gwen. Gwen is not paying attention. Chase is not subtle. <laughs> Would you fuck off? I think Rocket's hurt. Listen, in a few minutes, we may have more of these guys showing up. I don't think Rocket has much fight left in him right now. Gwen does not like hearing that. Chase just holds the gun. <laughs> Aren't you strapping two shotguns at the moment? Yeah, you got... <laughs> You're pretty well strapped, Sage. Well. <laughs> well, Gwen would finally kind of give up and just distractedly take it from him and, like, immediately set it on the ground next to her because she's still kind of doting on the dog. That's good enough. Chase really doesn't argue as long as she now has the firearm. Um... He's going to actually take the key from Marco's room and unlock the door slowly, but not, like, open it. Like, he's not going to turn the lock and then push the door open straight away. He's far too concerned about a booby trap to do that. Uh, so that would be the one room down. Well, as you unlock the room, you hear the lock click. He looks to the... Uh basically the seam of the door for something that's used to identify whether the door has been opened in the meantime. Piece of paper, small stick, some kind of indicator that Marco would have used to show that someone had been in his room or not. You're not finding anything. Okay. He looks through the small... He opens the door gently and checks the crack just to see if there's a wire and runs his hand gently up and down the door to see if anything's attached to the edge of the door. Um, actually, you're not going to find anything. Uh, it seems that, uh, well, you're not going to find a wire doing what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But you don't find anything running your hand up and down the door. You don't see a wire in the darkness. Uh, you can try to roll something for a closer inspection. Yeah, that makes sense. Huh. You still <laughs> God damn it. Bad dice from last game followed me. Yeah. Maybe he's still stunned from the camera flash. Leave him alone. I mean, so Chase seems like a fairly MacGyver guy. Couldn't he like go into the bathroom, find some perfume and like spray it and see if it like This is nineteen sixty nine. We're if they're using laser traps in this hellhole, <laughs> no, we're no, fucked. No. <laughs> no. Why would the hotel have perfume? Just like complimentary perfume. I've never heard of that. We we've said that the room was occupied by somebody previously. Maybe they a had a large black man. Yes, perfume. <laughs> <laughs> something in a spray bottle. I'm just thinking like something in a spray bottle that like Anti you would spray. Cologne, anything but perfume. Yes, that. And the whole thing was not lasers. The idea was that like it would catch on like a wire and you could see the glint of the liquid off of it. Well, if my hand didn't see it or find it. <laughs> Maybe it's magic. Well, I can't prepare for magic. Chase wouldn't prepare for magic. Yeah. But you would prepare for the other things. Oh yeah, if there was a grenade wired to the door, of course he would. 
That's why he's literally running his hand up and down the crack of the door. Well, anyway, I'm not gonna... Chase not finding anything, because that's consistent with the role. He's going to open the door. Not fast, but he is going to open the door. The door creaks open, and you find a... Well, you can see into the hotel room, and what you find is another empty hotel room. This one seems a little bit neater than Porter's, though. There's not paperwork light across the bed. It looks almost as if there's been no one living in it, except for the fact that one of the beds is disturbed. Right. And the sheets have been pulled back. You can clearly see the outline of where somebody was sleeping. All right. Um, I'm going to look behind the door now. <laughs> you see the back of a door. There we go. Okay, that's all I want. Now I will actually do... <laughs> he closes the door gently behind him and searches the room properly. Which I'm rolling for. Hold on. Yes, of course. There you go. Well, in the dark, it's a little bit of a struggle, um, considering that... Uh, well, considering that the power is out and there are no lights. But you're able to pull out a... Uh, you actually uh, kind of run your hands across the mattress and feel an odd lump on the bed that's not been slept in. Slept in? Sleeped. I know English, guys! <laughs> on the bed that's not been slept in. And after you examine underneath the bed, you find that uh, somebody has tucked a uh, briefcase into the actual frame of the bed under the mattress so that if you just looked under the bed, you wouldn't see anything, but you felt that lump on the mattress itself. All right, Chase pulls out the briefcase. I'm assuming it's locked. <laughs> it is, in fact, locked. Well, I may be the right person to do this. Hold on. <laughs> Chase attempts to not force the lock so much as... Uh, it's a rotary lock, right? Like a standard briefcase. He's basically pushing, applying force to the rotors to feel where the catch is internally. Okay. To pick the lock that way. Or figure out the combination directly. Go right ahead. Ah! It's a coin flip if you push it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm wondering if I need the luck, however. Alright, well, if, if he can't immediately do it, Chase is going to literally take it with him. There's nothing else that he's finding in the room directly, I'm assuming. You would find clothing, but nothing of interest. The man has unpacked, but you're going to find just basic clothes, um, not any of the uh, uniforms like you found in the other room. Just normal stuff that's really completely uninteresting. Um, any photographic equipment? Not in here. Interesting. Okay, well he's going to uh, basically open the door and, you know, check the hallway before closing the door and locking it behind him and walking back to the group room where everyone's okay. there. And he's going to put the uh, this little briefcase down and uh, he's going to kind of... Oh, who to bring? Uh... <laughs> he's basically going to turn to the two. Uh, we need to get into the editor's room now. Well, that's... Character, is he is he looking to uh, kick the door in or pick a lock? Because pick the lock. Is... Then don't bring Gwen. We're good. That answers the best. Okay, then Gwen and Rocket, you're going to be watching these two guys. If they wake up, knock them unconscious again. <laughs> Gladly. No, I think the hallway is the better way to go. Unless you want to do this from two points at once. Well, then we take the simplest way in, and if necessary, to use blunt blues, eh, use blunt force. I was gonna say use blues clues. I was really confused. Blues, 
but you're what? Your sexy police officer is here. Your sexy pastor. Oh God. Anyways. Is she wearing anything under it? The habit, I mean. Two shotguns <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> and wow. Is she wearing anything? It would really chafe. It? The habit, I mean. Two shotguns and Anyways. nothing else. <laughs> so what's the plan, guys? Well, I guess the plan is the most direct one. Chase and Sage go down to the editor's door and, uh... What do you think? Knock? Wait, or wait. try to pick? <laughs> sure! Yeah. I'm white. <laughs> Listen, by the time I finish explaining my backstory to the person that opens the door, we should have already knocked him unconscious and dragged him to another room. Don't roll a listen check on me. Anyway, let's just go. <laughs> Chase, Sage, would you both roll listen checks for me, please? Wait, why not Gwen? Because you're not in the doorway with them. But yeah, I am. Success. Look at the, look at the thing, I am. No, no, no. There's oh, you mean the other doorway? Gotcha. Yeah, the editor door, which I would have. Uh, wait, wait we're, for. we're not right in front of the door. Yeah, they didn't leave the room. Sage, oh, I, Sage, little, I mean, well, Angie actually uh, said out of character, no, we're not leaving until we decide what we're doing. Gotcha. Alright, I was mistaken which door. Either way... It's yeah, irrelevant. It, no, it's not. Because you're going to hear a door open. Out in the hall. Gwen tenses up because she's in the doorway of the room that they're in down this direction. The direction you guys were actually discussing about to go. Chase removes his, uh... quietly removes his, uh... priest cassock, and underneath he's wearing just regular black pants and sort of a thin black t-shirt, because tactical turtlenecks are way too warm for this time of year. And... <laughs> basically pulls his pistol out with the suppressor and has his camera in the other hand and sort of moved towards the door. Gwen stands up where she is. Was anybody looking out into the hall? I mean, Gwen would, I guess. Not that I think she can probably see much because it's so dark, but... She's ready to fucking knock some shit out. Well, as you look out in the hall, you actually see, a couple doors down from the editor's room, a mousy-looking man, well, as far as you can tell in the dark, poke his head out of the room and quickly examine the hall before you hear him loudly declare, Oh, shit! And the door slams shut. Is that the guy? Or, or at the editor's door. That is the editor's door that just slammed shut. That opened, head poked out, then slammed shut. That is the editor's room. Uh, Gwen is gonna fucking just kind of make a beeline to this door and give it a good old kick. Oh, well... <laughs> Chase follows with the gun literally pressed back behind his thigh, so if someone else opens their door, they don't immediately see a man with a gun standing there. Even his silhouette. I'm going to need a strength check from Gwen. Uh... hey -o! You kick the door down. You plant your foot right into it, and the doorknob snaps, still stuck in the frame, while the door swings inwards. 
and you can see this relatively small man fumbling with something in his hands, which as soon as he sees you, he drops and makes a run for the balcony. She would lunge right the fuck after him and make a grab for his shirt if there's something to basically hold on to him and kind of simultaneously swing a punch right out of his face. Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, You could shoot him. <laughs> you could shoot him, yeah. Well, do I roll brawl for that? Um, yeah, that's going to be brawl. Can I roll spot hidden for what's on the ground? Yes, you can roll spot hidden. Hang on, I'm breaking a nose. <laughs> you suck. God it damn it. <laughs> I, I've not had a good luck lately. Yeah, no joke. Um, more or less, you're able to grab the man and just drag him to the ground, immediately throwing him into the dirt. Um... He swears loudly. But he doesn't swing back. He grabs onto Gwen's shirt with both hands. And Gwen, in the dark, you swear you can see a seam split across his face. Like just a thin red line starting underneath his scalp and going all the way down underneath his chin like a strap. And as that thin red line forms, small appendages begin to emerge from it. Almost like the legs of a fly, but made entirely out of flesh. God damn no it. Chitin. <laughs> no chitin, just raw red meat as this thing digs into the digs into the seam and pulls itself free of the head, taking with it the face and even the raw exposed brain before spreading a couple of fat fleshy wings that by no means should be able to sustain flight and uh, rising off the corpse and going straight for the balcony. Snapshot? Can I roll decks to try and catch it? You. Uh, you'd have to let you'd have to let one yes go ahead roll photography and you would have to let go of the uh, now faceless man. Yeah, she would let you. go to catch it. No, I, I actually meant shot, and I guess in shoot, shoot. Oh, oh, snap, shoot. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but in the dark, you're gonna take a penalty dice. It's okay. Well, should I try to grab it first before we shoot Gwen in the crossfires? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Okay. You're closer. I would be reacting. Oh, I'm gonna spend one luck. Um. Also, both of you are gonna need to take a sanity check real quick. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. You watched a man's face God just come off. Uh, then I do intelligence, right? Yep. Uh, uh intelligence. Okay. Ah, uh, fuck. I failed both. Me too. Okay, so Jay, that means you take the minimum, which is going to be one d three. And Darby, you're gonna take one d four plus two. <sighs> Of course, one, Max. Two. All right. Okay, so you All right. lose five sanity. Okay. Uh, and that actually qualifies, because we talked about this last time, uh -oh. that qualifies you for temporary insanity. Oh, God! Let's bring up the book. Oh, boy. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Where is sanity? I have the wrong book open. Or I had the right book open? You know, you can just forget about it. It's alright. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nice ah, here it is. A for every. Alright, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Losing maximum sanity. Five or more sanity points. Mm -hmm. Alright, so where is the... Because now she's due for a temporary insanity, and a, and that would could lead to a bout of madness. It's a real-time one, though. Yes. So, bout oh, of I madness. Yeah, real-time. Roll 1d10. Oh, shit. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's going to be a 2. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh, that is psychosomatic what? disability. 
The I investigator suffers a psychosomatic deaf blindness, deafness, or loss of the use of a limb or limbs for 1d10 rounds. Well, Go ahead and roll 1d10. Roll well, roll 1d3 for me and then roll 1d10. Okay. Now 1d10. Uh. You're blind for 10 rounds, Gwen. Holy As shit. you feel your fingers wrap around sort of the weird fleshy construct and dig into this gross, slippery, wet meat, your vision fades to complete and utter blackness. Well, that fucking sucks, and not really knowing what to do in that situation, but very much choking on adrenaline. She would just cling on to the shit that she still has her hands around, which I guess would be the goober bug, and uh, probably, yeah, I guess she had to completely let go of the dude, huh? Yes, she did. All right, so then she's just hanging on to the goober bug. Okay. I like that we're calling it a goober bug. It's I gross. Kind of just spit beer. <laughs> okay. That's some shit. Do I have to put a tick on that temp insane box? Yes. All right. She Please. invested in blind fighting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, Gwen... Well, Chase, you're going to recognize exactly what that faceless creature is that is currently underneath Gwen, and you're going to watch as it lunges to wrap itself around her, trying to shove her face into its uh, now gaping orifice. Wait, the body is doing that? Yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh! Can I try to dodge or something? Uh, have to beat an extreme. You'd have to beat an extreme, but yes, you you can attempt to dodge. I'm going to say, as a GM, you're not really going to be able to fight back since currently you're blind. Right, but... But if you tried to dodge, <laughs> and that's... Yeah. Close! That's it's close! I can't spend luck, can I? No, you cannot. Fuck! And unfortunately... I'm going to say since that's an extreme success, the creature in its efforts to grapple you forces you to release the brain. Okay, I don't really want to hold it anymore. Now it can go. Okay. Chase, <laughs> your turn. <laughs> I changed my mind. I don't want Kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> oh! Oh, wow. What's funny is I actually do max damage plus that because that's a penetrating success. And that is with your uh, suppressed pistol, so okay. Uh, it does get an opportunity to dodge. Wait, is this the Beat my extreme. Or the flying brain. He's shooting at the flying brain. Yeah. Even though I rolled a one, that would be 11. <laughs> yeah. It needs to. Wow, yeah. Needs to be a uh, beat a one. It is not. Okay. It is definitely not. All right. Um, and since you did max damage, and this thing is technically just a face with a brain stem attached, it is now actually a fine pink mist decorating the room. Did the thing Chunk. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hang on. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting people on the turn order. Let's see. Add turn. Also, okay. if we finish the combat before 10 rounds, how do the rest of the rounds that I'm blind get handled? That, that'll just be real time. It'll be about 70 seconds. Yeah, about a minute. Oh, alright. That's not horrible. Uh, let's see. Chase, your dex is 70 plus, what is it, 55? Plus 50 for wielding a gun? So 120? Yeah. Okay. Gwen... My deck's a 70. Okay. That turn. Deck's 70. You're not wielding a gun. Down yeah, by rocket. Feeling fists of blind fury. Yeah, she completely just fucked over her opportunity to have a gun, but... Yeah. It's okay, because it was in character. <laughs> I've got goobers on my hands. Yeah, Chase is a lot less likely now to be lenient with these guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh yes, because it's really gonna hurt my feelings that you kill my NPCs. Well, I'm just saying to the other other players. 
who thought I might take the time to be polite. I mean, did Gwen think that? I don't think Gwen was assuming that. I think Sage thought I'd be nicer. Okay, Gwen, you're up. Uh, okay, so I've got, I'm grappling with uh, Melon Baller face, right? He's grappled to you. You're not grappled him. Okay. He's holding on to you. All right, he's holding on to me. Then she's going to try to. Um, how is he holding on to me? Uh, more or less, he's got his arms. Uh, he's got you in kind of a his arms wrapped around you like a really awkward hug where he's got one hand pinned up, but he's shoved your face into his face hole. Oh, it's actually in his face hole now. Yes. Okay, well, she's going to fix her uh, hands around his throat and kind of twist, that's the wrong word, like crunch upwards to get her feet between them and give him a real good fucking kick in the chest to try and get some distance between them. Okay, so that's not going to do damage. That counts as a combat right. maneuver, but it will free you from the grapple if you're successful. What do I roll? Duh. That would be brawl. Brawl? Okay. Oh, thank God. Okay, yeah, that's going to get you free from the grapple. You're able to get free. Uh, you can. You haven't been able to do much uh, damage to the creature, but it's yeah. it skitters to the floor and uh, falls uh, on its ass, more or less. She just kind of blindly scoots back because she still can't fucking see. Well, as you scoot back, you can uh, hear the creature sort of with a... I wouldn't call it a groan, because it doesn't have much of a throat left, or a mouth with which to groan. Throaty gargle? Yeah, with a wet gargle, the creature, you can hear it rise off the ground, as well as a faint sizzle. And Chase, you might be able to see this, but you know exactly what's happening as the uh, that thick, viscous, not quite crimson, but a deep, rich, red liquid begins pouring from its, uh, pouring from its uh, uh, face and sizzling as it makes contact with the floor. It's going to lunge for the nearest target, once again going after Gwen. Do I have to roll dodge or something, or do I not? Uh, you will get an, well, you get an a chance to uh, defend yourself, but first it needs to attack. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, you do right. have the option to fight back or dodge, but because you're blind, you're going to take a... I'm almost tempted to say it's going to be two penalty dice, but it's going to be a penalty dice. So it's one or two? And it's going to be one, for sure. Okay. Um. If you fight back, you can do damage to it. If you dodge, you just negate its damage. But I have to get better than a 23? Or better well, you have to get better than a success. Okay. Uh, let's try to dodge, because she would be a little too discombobulated to be like, I'm going to throw a punch at this. Okay. That's a success, but you need to roll one more time because you've got a penalty dice. Oh. This does not disguise. I hide behind a vase. Hey! Yep. You're gonna be able to you're able to get out of the way and more or less the thing just kind of clumsily lurches forward. Kind of stumbling past Gwen and putting itself sort of between Gwen and uh Chase. Chase, you're up. Chase um, has both of his hands full, but he's basically going to let go of the camera so it's hanging by the strap on his neck. Mm -hmm. um, and he's going to take another shot. Now, it, I believe this counts as point blank, which, should, is... which should negate any uh, uh, penalty die in this case. Well, it'll negate one penalty die. So assuming okay. you're not trying to do a snapshot, you're doing one aim shot. Then yes, I'm doing a regular a shot. shot. Yeah, I'm not trying to yes. do three shots at once. Yeah, then it's just a regular roll. Wow! Wow. It's actually not a fumble. <laughs> he actually it's shoots not, at yeah. the wall behind him. Well, if I had one more skill point, it would have been a fumble. <laughs> yeah. Well, um... I guess it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, Although, I miss. I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, Sage. You realize that there's no, they haven't been back for a while, and you can hear fumbling and knocking around. Well, she heard the one gunshot, right? <clears throat> well, it's suppressed. Well, it's suppressed, but I still probably would have been able you to You want to hear the bullet I, hit the wall. I... Yeah, I'm putting you on the turn order now. Uh, da -da -da.
Okay. Uh, the, the, the Sage's turn. All right. Figures that we'd fight in like the one room off the map. <laughs> All right, but Sage, you're gonna gonna come in gun drawn. Locus, I have a solution. Hmm. Just move everybody up to the last room. Yeah, that's kind of. I was gonna say we could do that. So, put this there, there, when you're a little further in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sage, as you come rushing in towards the room, you're going to find Chase bearing his gun down on this faceless monstrosity. And you're going to take a sanity check. Could have stayed in the other room. Okay, well, your sanity was roll was fine anyways. You're able to steal yourself against it. Uh, oh, shit, your sanity's so high. Yeah. Okay, good for you then. You do still take the minimum sanity penalty, which is going to be 1d3. Okay, so you're going to take two. All right, but you've come into this room, and you see this horrific creature. Okay, you whip out your shotgun. Unfortunately, if you want to shoot this round, you're going to take two penalty dice because of the dark. Well, actually, it would be one penalty dice because you are at point blank range, but it is dark. But firing, drawing and firing a weapon in the same turn does count as a penalty dice. Also, your gun doesn't have a silencer on it, does it? Nope. It's a shotgun. A short barrel no, shotgun. I'm pretty sure those don't have silencers. They do, but... They're very modern, though. Okay. Well, before you get a chance to really get the words out, the creature lunges for Chase, attempting to go grab onto him. Chase fights back. Okay, that's a good choice. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I don't know why I ever bother closing this sheet, considering that I'm going to be using it a lot. It does not get a hand on you, but you do get a chance to fight back anyways. To pistol whip, it would just be unarmed combat? Success and it takes four damage. More or less, you whip the thing and it just stumbles back, not really able to get a grip on any of you. Are we supposed to be able to see HP bars? Because I don't see any. Uh, you should be able to. God damn it. I swear I said <laughs> to. Oh, I got. Now there's one on Chase, one on me, one on Sage. Can you see it on the monster? No. How about now? Dad, no. What the hell? Oh, that's because that's bar three. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's yep. Take oh, yep. Okay, so maybe this will fix things. This is the, that thing hadn't taken much damage. We pretty much liquefied the. Uh, well, I don't want to say what it is, but the insect thing. Yeah, goober bug. Goober bug. I hope Rocket's keeping the hostages under wraps, because we kind of just left them. <laughs> Don't get right. any ideas, Locus. <laughs> Me? Never. Shut up. 
All right, so we're going to readjust this real quick because now that you've got a gun drawn, that's going to raise your initiative by 50. We've just reset, so okay. Uh, Chase, it's your turn. You uh, just pistol whipped the beast back. Chase grabs a more suitable melee weapon from the back of his pants. <laughs> Which is a strange <laughs> statement, but... <laughs> I'm going to laugh my ass off you said the front of his pants. That would have been absolutely No, it's a hooked blade. You don't want that in front. Yeah, Ooh, no. you're a cat? Oh, God. Anyways, you grab <laughs> your hooked blade. And I take a swing. There will be a penalty dice, because even though you're up close, so the darkness doesn't really affect you, you did draw. Does that apply to first. melee? As far as I know, it does. Alright. I'll take a penalty die. That's fine. Mm. You've still got a 75. Now, we're going to take that 9 damage, as is, since it was your first roll. I don't know. Uh, the 4 damage. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, but you did succeed. Um, unfortunately, you only did 4 damage. Wait. I kind of wish you'd done that 9. What? No, I need to roll again, because I have a penalty die. Unarmed oh! attack was the pistol whip. Okay. Was, say, was okay. that left over from something else? Yeah. That's okay. okay. I'm an idiot. Never mind. Yes, yeah, no, go ahead. Please roll like, again. Sorry, you confused me, so. <laughs> of course, and I roll a fail on the second one. I mean, we could go back to that four damage. I liked that. No. Huh? That's not how it works. <laughs> Sage, you're up. You could always just. You, well, you could, could punch nail... it. Yeah, you could always nail it in the head. Use like your shotgun as a close range weapon. Okay. Yeah, that'll be Brawl. Hey. Yeah, that's a hard success. It is going to try to fight back. It is not going to try to dodge. Can it even, like, realistically dodge if it doesn't have a face to see you and, like, take in senses and shit? Okay. Well, you're not- it's not going to be able to, uh, fight back. Uh, your damage- what is your damage? You didn't roll damage. Uh... Okay, then go one, two, three. This would count as unarmed. No, this would count as unarmed. Uh, unless you've got a- you don't have a damage bonus, so yeah, it's one, two, three. You did have a success. <laughs> it's going to count that as three, because you rolled unarmed attack instead of just the damage. If you roll an attack, if you do the unarmed attack, it's going to roll your... It's going to roll your brawl skill and your damage. You'd already rolled your brawl. Okay. Gwen! You're still blind. Yeah, she has basically... Uh found the bed and is on the floor leaning back against it uh kind of just listening to what's going on because she can't really do anything else and she's kind of freaking the fuck out a little bit because she can't see shit and she doesn't know why so she's just, and she's completely useless i guess right now go ahead and make a listen check for me please okie doke oh my listen shit on her no <laughs> Why well, would you make me do that? Um, you try to get an ear for what's going on so you can figure out what's happening, and you're focused so much on what's happening that your hand slips off the bed and now you're prone again. Oh, okay. You, you fall flat on your face like a dummy. Okay. <laughs> that was a really docile fumble, so I'm okay with that. Well, it's not over yet. I know, but... Because the monster is going to recognize that Gwen is on the ground ah, and weak. fuck you. And... Oh. oh! <laughs> no! Um, Gwen, you're grappled. This okay, thing has pinned on. you to the ground, more or less. It is on top of you. So, um... If my options are to dodge or fight back, I know that to dodge it, I have to do better than a fucking critical. So to fight back, do I have to do better than a one as well? No, you just have to succeed, and then you do damage to it. But you don't, basically, you don't prevent what's happening to you, but you get an opportunity to hit it. 
then she's going to do that because I'd rather do that than just lay there like a fucking baked potato. Okay. Do I roll that now? or? Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. And that'll be your dam. Now your damage. Now my damage. Hang on. Back to... Oh, fuck. I should have just rolled it all at once. Uh, Where's the thing? 1d4 uh... plus 1d3. Oh, okay. I'll just type it in. 1d4 plus... Oh, wait, hang on. 1d4. 1, 2, Okay. I mean, that's one way to do it. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. Just ignore me. Oh, wait, I did that wrong. Okay. But the creature still has Gwen pinned. And as it dribbles its caustic <gasps> fluids on it, she takes three points of damage. Goobers! Yeah. As the liquids begin to bubble and boil at her skin. Chase, you're up. Uh, Chase goes up behind the beast and goes to hopefully split its skull. It's kind of like half screaming profanities at this point. What the fuck? Oh, I, I didn't okay. understand what that word was. I was really confused what the hell kind of roll that was. You kill it. With the blade still kind of stuck in the head, Chase kind of rolls the body off of Gwyn. She just kind of fucking splutters and sits up. I can't fucking see. That's secondary to what just happened. No, it's, it was before. I can't fucking see and she's trying to, like, wipe the goobers off her face and everything. Chase kind of, he tucks the gun back into the holster and, uh, pulls the sword out of the thing's head and helps Gwen up <laughs> off the ground. She kind of takes a moment to steady herself on her feet, and she's still very much kind of drowning in adrenaline. Chase kind of guides her to the next room, and as he's passing Sage, he kind of says, Search this room, please. And now she collapses on the floor next to Rocket because they are both useless. Well, your vision's going to start coming back soon ish. Yeah. There's no, no power. No power. The power's not just off, it is disabled. <laughs> Chase will give you better I than that. Flashlight. No, you still Before have the one that Gwen gave you, remember? Before you leave the room, there is something that you see, despite your horrible failure. Um, as you sort of turn to leave the room to go after Chase, a light catches your eye. And you turn around and spot a slight gleaming in the carpet as the, um, oh god, what's it called? Flash stick? I forget. It's one of those quick catch, it's basically a big quick catch match for burning, uh, Time pencil. Time pencil, thank you. As the time pencil catches from where it had been dropped in the middle of the carpet, and a small fire breaks out. Step on it! Oh, they'd probably have... A cup or a bucket. Yeah, they'd have something in the bathroom. Yeah, dumping water is not going to require anything. You're more or less able to put out the fire before it gets any bigger. No, this will be pushing. This will be pushing the spot hidden roll. You bas you're basically using tools. <laughs> and you get upset when we use that meme elsewhere, and you bring it up here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was on you. I know. Well, 
Well, as you scan across the uh, pen, the pen light across the uh, room and into the bathroom, you find the uh, camera equipment that Chase had been looking for earlier. The bathroom has been set up as sort of an improv dark room. You find film, you find a variety of cameras across the room, tucked in hidden places under under pillows in the in the uh, closet. Just generally some photographic equipment, not so much the uh, um, paperwork that you found before. The other interesting thing of note you do find in the uh, closet is two more of those Khmer uniforms and two more of those rifles, as well as a handful of loaded magazines. Again, tucked away behind uh, as much, uh, tucked away behind um, luggage and clothing to hide them from plain sight. All right, one second. Chase is going to go to 299 and try to unlock the door. So, okay, all the way down here. Get me Big room! Locksmith. Yeah, get me a locksmith roll, please. You've unlocked the door. This hotel is shit security. <laughs> yeah. All the locks he's picked, the hardest thing he's found so far is a briefcase. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that room open. He's basically just gonna go in and make sure there's no one, like, the, like not one of the staff is like using it as their personal crash room or something like that. Nope. Uh, as far as you can tell from a cursory glance, nothing is off with the room. Although, of course, you can always roll for a more thorough search. No, for now, I just want to make sure there's nobody in it. Yeah, there is nobody in it. Okay. Uh, Chase is going to go back to the original room. See if Gwyn can see by now. <laughs> can she? Yes, by this point your vision will have returned, although it's kind of difficult to tell at first, considering how dark the uh, building has gotten with the lack of power. Okay. But you do feel, uh, but you are able to eventually pick out Rocket's snoot as he nuzzles up <laughs> you and more or less leans on you with his one good side for cuddles. Poor baby. She's got her fingers all knotted in his fur and she, they're both having a shit night. Is she gonna The prisoners are still there and are still unconscious. I mean, their pogs are there, I'm assuming they are. Just kind of walks up next to Gwen. And their nipples? <laughs> Chase... Their nipples are present, therefore they must be as well. <laughs> Chase walks up to Gwen, kind of like waves his hand in front of her face. Yeah, I, I think my sight's back. Bends over and picks the handgun off the floor he had handed her earlier and puts it firmly in her hand. Just kind of gives him this dry look. And then he stands up and says, Could you move the fuckwits to the room all the way at the end of the <laughs> hall? Yeah. She gets up and tries to help Rocket to his feet because, you know, he's priority. And she just shuffles him on down. Oh, yeah. He gets, he gets one of the beds all to himself. Chase basically pokes, walks into the room and closes the door behind him. Okay, what do you got? So can't move the fuckwits, but... Yeah, I'm moving them. Thank you. Samuel? Samuel. Well, I want you to get on that just as soon as we finish looking through here. Uh, anything else you find? Uh, great. What else did you find? <laughs> Two AK-47s in the closet and a shitload of loaded magazines. Are they National Topographic Magazines? <laughs> yes. High capacity oh, National Topographic Magazines. <laughs> I just, like, snortled so hard I actually hurt my nose. <laughs> Chase just kind of whistles quietly and says, that is a lot more hardware than we were expecting. No, that's a little too loud for me. 
Chase kind of picks up one of the AKs. Are they like, I mean, are they like something you literally would find in a forest, or are they like newer, like in de really good condition kind of thing? These are newer, but give me an intelligence check, Jay, real quick. These are Chinese clones. Chase is now very confused. Norenko pistols? Norenko rifles? Here? Hmm. Kind of just make sure that the chambers are empty and then puts them back. Yeah, chambers empty. There are no magazines loaded. These guns have been stored safely. Right, okay. Uh, Chase takes the uniforms from her and uh, basically says when you're done in here go to go read that paperwork I'm gonna need a report I'm gonna send uh, Gwen back to Parvana Chase doesn't know what he did to deserve that but leaves the room anyway <laughs> well okay then all right. Chase goes to the goes to the room to take over basically for Gwen and Rocket and hopefully with Gwen's help secures them quite tightly to two of the chairs in the center <laughs> of the room, moving the table out of the way. So they're basically back to back. Upright yep. in the chair. Yeah, I'll just put them like that. I can't move the furniture since That's fine. it's a static image, but yeah. And you had little like furniture fogs from a, a loving and caring artist. If only I did. <laughs> Anyhow. We can move them later, but for now, it's just that's how Chase would have put them together. Um, basically, he comes and he kind of looks Gwen over to see her injuries, and uh, I got this. Why don't you go back to Parvana? Just go quietly, casually. <coughs> don't have that gun out. And uh, see if you can bring back uh, Anderson as well. Gwen's kind of quiet for a minute, and she looks over at Samuel, who is presumably kind of slumped over unconscious in the chair. And she just kind of looks at him for a minute, and she fucking nails him across the face as hard as she can. Well, um, go ahead and... I'm not going to make you roll brawl for that. Just roll your damage. Uh... Are you hold actually let me back up. Are you holding okay. back? Are you actively trying to I want I don't want to kill him. I want to break his fucking nose. Well, I can tell you right now, even if you rolled max damage, you won't kill him. So go ahead and roll. Uh do I roll under uh weapon unarmed fighting roll? I mean, shit? you can or you could just roll 1d4 plus 1d3 since that's okay. your 1d4 plus 1d3. I think that's how you do it. And you guys should be able to see his health bar, but yeah. more or less, yeah, okay. <laughs> he has a big nose to have it take out a quarter of his health. Yeah, you, you uh, wake the man up by delivering a powerful haymaker to his face, and he immediately comes to as the blood starts to pool down across his lower face and just groans. What the fuck? If you fucking touch my dog again, I swear to God, I'll kill you. And she gets Rocket and heads on out. Okay. Samuel in the chair just blinks furiously, trying to adjust his eyes to the darkness before Ch not really seeing Chase, considering the angle Chase is at behind him, but just looking around the room like, what the fuck is going on? Chase doesn't say anything, but there's the sound of basically a pistol being checked behind him. Who is that? Chase doesn't respond. You're making a mistake. Chase doesn't respond. We're CIA and we're not alone. He still doesn't respond. <laughs> you hear a heavy sigh from Samuel, followed by sort of that awful um, wet spluttering as he tries to clear his nostrils of the blood that's now flowing pretty freely. But otherwise, now he's gone quiet after that big, heavy sigh. Um, Chase speaks Russian. Uh, Chase is going to uh, basically say, you know, good morning. 
sleep well. Also doing his best to have the the closest he can get to a papa bear, you know, rusky sound that he can. Hang on, I'm gonna take a quick look at your sheet. He doesn't speak much Russian, but it's just kind of a get him, just to see how he responds. The man sort of stiffens up in his chair and retorts in equally uh, brutish Russian. Um, he clearly doesn't have a better grasp on the language than Chase does, but he, he responds. Not particularly. Don't, doesn't help being woken up by a fist. Yeah, you're not pushing your push to talk. He kind of uh, switch. He switches to German. He's pretty much used his Russian now. He's trying to feel the guy out, and he asks him, "Come here, Rouge. That's interesting to find here." At this point, Samuel kind of tries to crane his head to look behind him at uh, uh, at Chase, and you can just hear him in Russian say, "What?" Chase smiles. He goes in French because he knows Samuel speaks French. He says, Come here, Rouge. That's interesting to find here. Again, another deep sighs. He sort of settles back into his chair. I have no idea what you're talking about. He's kind of from behind him, so basically at a corner. Comes and wraps the Camille Rouge shirt around his head. It's sort of itchy fabric, I'm sure, being pretty much indistinguishable from anything else, but it's now almost a execution sack over his head. Porter's going to absolutely thrash against this. Pretty uselessly, though, considering that he's completely restrained at the moment. He says in English, Camille Rouge, that's interesting to find here. Uh, Samuel now sort of, again, stiffens up in the chair, stops thrashing so much against the shirt wrapped around his head. I have no idea what you're talking about, he repeats. There's no audible response, but Chase kind of nods his head. I don't have a lot of time here. No, you don't. Well, if you put it like that, you don't have a lot of time here either. What is your mission? We'll just start off with the simple things. You say you're CIA? Prove it. Can't exactly with my hands tied. You sure Why can. Why I prove it to you? Because I'm the man that can kill you right now says, you aren't just going to kill me as soon as I prove I'm CIA. Wh who do you work for? I don't think you understand how this works. Alright, you don't want to answer that. <coughs> Name and serial number. You're American, let me guess. Former military? At this, you can see sort of a visible reaction uh, from Porter. And there's a moment of silence before uh, he uh, repeats that. He repeats a line of numbers to you. Uh, it might be a American serial number, but you really don't have the means to check right now. That's relevant. And then he repeats that his name is, um, oh, God, my brain just farted so hard. Wow. Samuel Porter? Samuel Porter. Thank you. Jesus Christ. I was going for, I, I knew, I was thinking Stephen Porter, but I knew it wasn't Stephen. Jesus. Just remember, if you need to remember, just think of the fish man in the other game. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, yes. My name is Samuel Porter, and then he would, of course, give you right number of digits 
right uh, cadence for a uh, serial number. But again, you don't have the means to check it, but you said that's irrelevant, so please go on. There's the sound of footsteps as Chase kind of walks around. He's actually spending, seemingly, most of his time looking at uh, Marco. And he says, you're not even the interesting one right here, honestly. Then why are you asking me? You're awake. Would you rather sit in silence? I have time, at least for now. I think that'd be a good idea. All right. We'll reconvene in a bit. So Chase just literally pulls the third seat, which was for, which was going to be for the editor, and just sits. <laughs> okay. While you do that, let's go ahead and move on down to Sage. You are th going through the uh, room. How? What are you? What are you doing exactly? Describe to me how you're going through the room. Yes. You found paperwork where the word oh I'm gonna fuck this up. Well the words Ubersin Lich Ubersin Lichvacht Ministerium stuck out to you as it appeared multiple times as the header for this paperwork. It is German. At least as far as you can tell. Uh, they're on the bed. Yes. Can I just say that I think that the name for uh, Jay and his characters collectively should be Jason? Jason. 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 Okay. I will go back into silence now. Continue. Anyways, um, Jay, you're handed a fat wad of paperwork in German, which you can read. Chase takes out his flashlight. Not his pin light, his flashlight. And looks immediately at the top copy. This is going to be a set of orders for the proper storage and handling, as well as transport, for something that has been redacted in black ink. They detail exactly how it needs to be kept in the briefcase, and under no circumstance should you open the redacted as there are potential redacteds that could result if you open the redacted, as well as, just for safety's sake, you probably should not expose redacted to temperatures above redacted and below redacted. Chase plays the typical Mad Libs game with a redacted article. You can guess. Hmm. Give me a library use role. Oh! Did she like... Yeah, that's... Yeah, that should not be a fumble. But no, oh, okay. you cannot immediately find anything of interest. Everything you find it is in a different language, and as you search through it, nothing is really sticking out to you as important. You're not finding terms like you did on that first folder that clearly demonstrate that this is something relevant. You're not sure what you're sifting through. And as you continue to sift through the paper and Chase sits in silence and reads his uh, paperwork, our good friend Gwen is going to return to the houseboat. Yup. And she's gonna scoop Rocket up by his collar, 
and or his harness rather and just kind of hoist him onto the boat because the poor thing is having trouble and uh she'd immediately just kind of not like loudly but um noticeably calling out for parvana and anderson since you are have been watching the boat you are kind of on the outside and witness this happening you can tell that Gwen's not in great shape, even in the dark, as you can see blisters forming along her collar, as well as Rocket very, very openly is acting wounded. At that point, um, since she's probably going to notice these things, she'd uh, pull out her weapon that's been kind of strapped to her, which means she's kind of fumbling around, getting duct tape off of herself, kind of being you know, cursing under her breath as she does so, finally gets it off, pulls some hair out that was probably not supposed to come out, um, gives herself a nice back wax, and then, uh, you know, lightly jogs over to Gwen. What happened? Everything okay? It's just shit fucking brain flying away, and I went blind. I don't really know. Hang on. And she just tries to get Rocket situated and calls out for Parvana again. Uh... Anderson just kind of stares blankly, confused, trying to put together the words flying and brain. Futurama hasn't come out yet, but <laughs> there's thoughts of that. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, you Leave her alone, lose. she's traumatized. 1D84, uh, uh, sanity for seeing into the future. <laughs> Dude, an 84-sided dice is just a sphere, I think. Yes. This is a round ball. You who Parvana? I believe at that point she'd be roused from her nap because that's what she said she was doing. To which she would get up and come out and respond to the call. And see you don't what's know going any veterinary on. shit, do you? That's not my specialty. No. Can you try to do something? I don't know how he's hurt, but he's hurt. Also, Parvana, one thing you would notice is very familiar boils, or blisters bubbling along, like I said, Gwen's sort of collar. Blisters you've seen before on, I believe it was yourself, yes. actually. Yes, yeah. That would... okay. I'll, I'll take a look, but what happened to you? Look at him first. I, just, I don't really fucking know what happened to me. All right, come in, come in. We'll explain it while I'm while I'm working. Okay. And she just goes in and kind of ushers Rocket in in front of her and finds a place before, to sit down. Before uh, Gwen makes it fully in, uh, Anderson would kind of call back after her. Is there anything I need to be concerned about? Have you guys neutralized the threat? Yeah, I, I think Chase has it all taken care of. So, at that point, uh, Anderson will just um, kind of cock the weapon, make sure it's the safeties off of it, and uh, just kind of stand guard and look for things that are flying that don't look normal, or things in the ground that don't look normal. Just there any is sort ground. of brains whizzing by. There is ground. That is abnormal because you're on a boat over water. Things things in the water. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson opens fire on a patch of grass. Uh, can, I, can I do a spot hidden check? Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. I am the greedest. Wow. <laughs> uh, you are the greedest. And as you scan the uh, docks under the pale... Uh, actually, by now, the sun might almost be peeking over the edge. Not quite coming over, but there's a little bit of light rising from the horizon. In that thin f uh, light, you see... Absolutely fucking nothing. But if anything was coming, <laughs> you would see the shit out of it long before it ever got to you. <laughs> so please keep going. Anderson admires the sunset that or the sunrise that she can see in extraordinary inhuman like detail. Yeah, you know those. There's a tear to her eye. It reminds her of her home with potatoes. Those mantis ships that can see like a million more colors than yeah. people. For like five minutes, you can see that in the sunrise. It's really lovely. <laughs> can I regain some sanity from that? <laughs> uh, are you missing any sanity? Yes. 
All right, go ahead and let's see how much sanity are you missing. Go roll 1d6 and you get that back. How about that? I will give you that for an extreme success. You get two points of sanity back. Also, yeah. also roll 2d10 and then add that to a new skill in uh, landscape painting. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh my god. Well, you've got 19 in landscape painting now. Congratulations. You're a fucking artist. I'm, I'm so saving I'm, that. You cannot do, I'm saving that. Oh, I'm go ahead. Put Anderson's a having a wonderful put a 19, morning. Put a 19 in landscape painting. I won't even... Yep, there you go. Good, I'm glad. Okay. <laughs> Gwen's gonna punch her just on the principle that she's just having a grand old vacation and she just got goobered all over. Anyways, Anderson, or uh, uh, Gwen Parvana, you're ushered into the houseboat for medical attention. All right, uh, Parvana is going to get right to work, turning to Gwen. Just, just try to keep him calm. It's what, what exactly was the nature of what happened? You're going to have to explain that to me first. Well, he got kicked. I think I, I didn't really see. Um, she just kind of takes him in and pinches the bridge of her nose to try and think back because there's a lot of adrenaline and she's trying to sort out exactly what happened in her head chronologically and she goes uh we were we went to the hotel and uh basically we got into a scrap with the um the black guy from the bar and some other dude and in the middle of all of that i guess rocket got kicked well, we knocked both of them out, dragged them into a fucking room, and then there's another guy, and I went to go knock the shit out of him, and then his face opened up and latched onto me, and something flew off. I don't really fucking know what happened, but I went blind. Wait, wait, okay. wait his, his face flew off? Yeah. I don't really know how else to describe it. I'm sorry. His, his face fucking left. Okay, continue. And... At the while she's explaining that and kind of but looking, it, she's just trying to give that similar like rub once over, being very gentle, just trying to figure out where exactly Rocket will respond to tenderness. So, so he got kicked. Yeah, he got kicked. He didn't have any um, weird shit on him. Hmm. Um, yeah, and so she's essentially going to kind of do the best. I mean, she's not a, a veterinarian by trade, but I mean, she could just feel around suspecting to see if there's any broken ribs or any bruising or any kind of look like blood pooling or anything like that. Yeah, go ahead. Give me a uh, medicine roll, please. Oh, what a surprise. I don't have my character sheet open. <laughs> Glad I'm not the only one who's made that mistake tonight. Oh, thank God. I was going to say, if you fumble this and like end up stabbing my dog, this is I'm just going to leave this game. <laughs> um, near as you can tell, he might have a cracked or bruised rib. It doesn't seem to be completely broken through. But there's really not much you can do to treat him right now beyond making him comfortable. And I don't mean that in the put the puppy down kind of way, <laughs> but you do realize that if you gave him a small dose of painkillers, it would leave him woozy, but he would feel better. More or less, you're just your only options now because you lack a veterinary background are to sedate the dog. Gwen, from the best of my knowledge, and as I said, I am not a veterinarian. Looks like he's he's taken a big blow, and the best thing to do would to keep calm and not agitate it, not some some rest. And I, to the best of my abilities, I could calibrate you know a non harmful amount of sedative, but. Yeah, just keep him comfortable. I, 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 I just don't want things to get fucking worse. All right. Okay, go ahead and roll 1d3. That will count as your, uh, basically, you are healing him, but it's going to leave the puppy groggy. 
Oh, oh. unfortunately, he's only going to get one hit point back. Poor baby! Alright. It's, and so she goes through, she uh, looks through kind of the medicine of what would be best. Uh, essentially what she could do figures that she really doesn't know the best spot to do anything injection-wise or how that would respond, so uh, just breaks off enough of a uh, kind of a something taken orally and mm. just looks to Gwen and is like, should we mix this with food? Probably mixing this with food would be the best option. Nah, I got it. He's taking pills before and she just kind of takes it from him and gently but unceremoniously pries open the dog's mouth, sticks it down his throat, closes his muzzle, and kind of rubs his throat until he swallows. And the dog does not look pleased about it, but he is um, agreeable. Yeah, he definitely whines a little bit. What works, works. Now, tell me, what happened to you? This is... And she he pretty much takes out her little... It's late, right? Uh, it's actually very early. Yeah, it's, it's early, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she takes Nobody's out her, up at right now. And since she probably is going at this with a bit of a flashlight right now, or the pen light, and kind of looks around Gwen's jawline and nods as... It looks does look familiar to her. Tell me what exactly happened to you. No, I told you this fucking guy's face flew off, and then he. I don't really know. I, I, my vision just went. I, I don't know why. It's not like I got anything in my eyes, but I think it tried to. I don't know. Eat my head or something. I don't really know what. I got away from it. Good enough, I guess. Between. You've me and Chase and Sage managed to put them both down. But... And you say his face came off. Before your vision went blurry, did you get a look at yeah. the body? It was, was just it... a normal dude until it wasn't. And she kind of looks and continues the examination and then rubs her temple as it's very, very familiar to her. And when you felt it try to eat your face, as you said, how, how did that feel? Did it feel like sharp burning? I felt like shit, Parvana. It felt like fucking chemical burn. Okay, that first part was less helpful. That second part was very helpful. Um, so yeah, she is essentially going to see if she can go back to the medical kit, pretty much take out what she can, drawing from her own experience of when she had this exact same injury and treated herself, see if, think back to, you know, okay, was it more of kind of a acidic style burn? Could she neutralize it a little bit what does she have here is it just painkiller or at the very least she can just start dressing the wound for gwen okay that'll be another medicine roll please and that's a good success you're going to remember your how you treated it very well and you're going to be able to heal 1d3 points of damage When you get two hit points back. Working back. Yeah. <laughs> Next one will be a three. You suck with dogs, not so bad with girls. I mean, that makes sense for a doctor. Arbonne. Yeah, no, it does. It's not even arguing that. She sucks for Rocket. You still at half health. And. All right. Be careful. And just. Prepare for this. It's going to be bright, and she's going to kind of hold open Gwen's eye and look into it, holding a light back, you know, off to the side to see if there's any damage or anything there. And your vision's coming back? Yeah, it seems fine now. And I'm going to assume that she can't see any damage or anything since this was 
caused by bouts of madness. No, there is no damage. It was completely psychosomatic. So it looks like we lost Angie. Oh dear. Yeah. There she is. Welcome back. Yeah, no worries. But and the others yeah. are fine. Do they need me there? No, I think I fucking took the worst of it. Um, I, I didn't see anyone else get hurt. Ghostly voice of Chase. He said, "Bring everyone back." Oh yeah! <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I'm a yeah. fucking idiot. <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> Let me revise my previous statement. No one else got hurt, but he does want you to come back there. He got those two fuckheads tied up, and I don't know. So we're just going to leave this place alone after we know that it's. They know where it is. What, the boat? The boat. I think we've got all of them under wraps up there. What did the guy say? There was a fucking editor and a photographer and a writer or something. We knocked out three guys. One of them's face left. I'm assuming he's out of the picture now. The other two are tied up under Chase's thumb. He's just hanging out. Uh, the actual corpse is just kind of spilling all over the uh, floor. <laughs> Look at a mop, it's fine. It's carpet, you can't mop carpet. Look at a mop, it's fine! Oh my god. Alright, I, I want to take a look at this anyway. Let me gather um, up my things. Does the boat lock out of character? Yes, it does. Okay, then... Although there's Gwen's only so much gonna... you can really lock up on a boat. Right, but Gwen is going to arrange to have Rocket locked up in there. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, and no... she's going to, like, get his vest on him and everything and do the best she can to both set up an area for him to be comfortable and kind of... Uh, he doesn't really have much in the way of, like, body protection except for the vest, which isn't, like, bulletproof or anything, but it's something. So she's just mm. kind of, you know, lays out some food and water, and he's kind of starting to get woozy, so she just hopes that he's going to take a nice little nap in their absence and not have anything weird happen. Yeah, you he you kind of see him roll onto the side that's not bothering him, and he's just kind of big old uh, doggo sigh and closes his eyes. Yeah, she'll give him a little kiss on the nose and then get up to leave. Uh, no, you have not. But as I'm going to assume, Gwen and Parvana are going to grab Anderson and head yes, back to the apartment. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move back there. No, you have not searched Marco's room yet. In fact, you haven't been in Marco's room yet. As far as you know, it's still locked. I was going to draw a little boat for him to sit in. No, you went into the editor's room. You've been in Porter's room and Marco's, or in uh, the editor's room. Okay. Well, if you're just going to wait and, you know, you keep going through the paperwork, they would uh, show up more or less without uh, anything happening in the meantime. The most exciting thing they would see would be the um, desk clerk completely ignoring them as they walk in and fighting with a lamp. He's not particularly winning. I don't know who's drawing with me, but God bless you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rocket is officially taken care of. Let's move on. When the three of them show up, I'm assuming Gwen would take them back to the suite? Uh, yeah, she'd go back to the suite with them. When they knock on the door or whatever, however they want to indicate, Chase would open the door and basically just put his hands on his lips as if to say, shut up. <laughs> and um, he would kind of motion for... Uh, Anderson to come in, and as she comes in, he motion he points to the chair and says, "Just be your usual self." And then he <laughs> takes Gwen's arm to lead her out of the room. What, what, what fucking gives? He does not respond. <laughs> and they close the door, and Chase starts walking down the hallway. He kind of turns and nods to Parvana. 
Anderson What's going on? Stares at the bodies of these people. Chase doesn't Stoic. say anything, but <laughs> Stoic. She is the epitome of potato right now. Angry potato. Angry, Angry potato. <laughs> Chase doesn't explain to Parvana, but just literally leads her straight down to the editor's room, opens the door, and motions for her to come in, and hands her the flashlight as she walks in. That's one Sage's in, right? Hey, Sage is in Marco's room right now, I think. No. <laughs> Which one's the editor's room? I don't know. Oh, Sage oh, oh, that's... Parvana walks in with the flashlight and finds whatever Chase is motioning to. The body. Now that Gwen actually has her eyes back, she's taken a minute to like actually check this thing out and be disgusted by it. And she looks to Chase and looks to the body. So I take it we now know how this wound happened. Chase nods. It wasn't pretty. And he kind of motions to the, what is the probably, like, gory mess that was the booger bug. Booger bug. It's all over the ceiling. <laughs> but he really doesn't explain. He leads Gwyn to, and Sage to talk about it. Chase has to go find something. So. That's, uh, a piece of shit. So, Sage, did your vision go as well? Well, at least it wasn't the front of your face. Gwen just kind of snorts. Uh, Parvana is going to immediately go in and start comparing this body to the notes from Berlin. Um, there's a few roles that would work for that. You could do medicine, intelligence, even education, library use, the notes. Do what you feel is appropriate. Um, do... I've done a lot of medicine. She's just, she's just thinking this one through. This is, she knows that from that body there's nothing more medical science could get from it she is going to think it through with intelligence because she is combining both her own notes the medical expertise and the whole bunch of time she spent with that book they dug up okay um well comparing it to your notes from berlin this is the exact same phenomena it almost is eerily close to how it's eerily close how the wounds were inflicted, it seems. Like, the bones that were missing, the cuts being as clean as they were, well, almost clean, they're, they're pretty ragged cuts, but it all looks exceedingly the same. Um, again, you kind of note the wounds on the body and how it's kind of odd that it is lacking such important organs, but it still continued to function, and then after a certain amount of damage, it died. But just kind of peculiar. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, what specifically are you looking for, though, other than trying to compare it to the notes from Berlin? Because this is incredibly similar to Berlin. It is incredibly similar. Um... It's, it's exactly the same. You can say that confidently. All right, then she's going to then take a look at the thing that is different, which is the uh, the thing Chase pasted against the wall. That's going to be a little bit harder, and that is going to require a separate roll, and I'm going to call that a hard check, considering that it's mostly a fine pink mist at this point. Yeah, It was a good shot. It was a good <laughs> shot, but it does make uh, forensics a little bit more difficult. Um, hmm, same role? Uh, you can, yeah, that'd work. Yeah, I just, this, this, uh, uh looking at a flying brain is not... <laughs> it's not medical science, yeah, for I'm... sure. No, that's absolutely not medical science. I saw this once in fucking medic's tent. 
But she's at least going to try to see if, from what's left of it, she can determine its means of locomotion or that it was a human brain. Okay. Um, you're able to go through the uh, pieces of the brain. Unfortunately, the, all you're go going to get are pieces. As far as you can tell from the chunks, it doesn't look dissimilar from a human brain, but because you don't have a fully intact specimen, it's hard to tell. As for the means of locomotion, you're actually able to find uh, a couple of those little meaty legs that were blown clean of the main body and one of the wings. But again, the wing is what perplexes you because it doesn't make sense. The little legs, they're gross and disturbing because they very much uh, mimic a fly or an arachnid's legs where they're jointed in such an unnatural compared to human anatomy way. But they're completely covered in this reddish pink skin. There's no chitin. It's this weird amalgamation of insect and human features. But you can understand how that would work in a basic sense. It's it's a leg. It doesn't it doesn't seem like something that would appear in nature, but you get the basic mechanics of it. The wing, on the other hand, is completely perplexing to you because it's a short, stubby little thing that is fatter than it should be able to generate any sort of thrust. It makes no logical medicinal sense why this thing would be able to fly using this little uh, fat nugget. <laughs> Chicken leg. Uh, that being said, considering the uh, gruesome state of the body as well as these unnatural features, that's going to be a sanity check. Parvana is... Check. Parvana is with it, as always. Yeah, she's unfettered as it can be. I'm gonna laugh when, like, the simplest thing has her fail a sanity roll. It's like, really, it's gonna hard happen. pieces of a chunky brain, but, like, this booger on the wall just has you completely triggered. Uh, they stop by a really dirty uh, gas station bathroom, and she fails <laughs> her sanity roll in that, and just completely... Fine. I'm gonna fucking uh, rage quit your game if we go to a gas station bathroom and you make us actually roll for sanity just because it's a gas station bathroom. I mean, it she, depends yeah. on the quality of the gas station bathroom. <laughs> she, Anyways. She sees graffiti on the wall that reads, where are the sluts, question mark. Struck with an existential crisis over where are the sluts. Where, in fact, are the sluts. Okay, um, oh, but that's currently the state of the room. I need to desperately use the bathroom. I thought I could hold it, but uh, I will be right back. Please talk among yourselves and share your findings. Chase would return about the time that Parvana had finished her uh, evaluation. Anderson would be staring at the two bodies, trying to burn a hole through them. Well, Chase... Can you tell me anything about this thing before you shot it out of the air? It was pretty fucking gross. It continues to be pretty fucking gross. Yeah, um... Well, I mean, the body is... I mean, I don't have to cover that. I think you, you understand that as well as I do. But the thing that came out of its face was like... Imagine, like, the most horrible mix of, like, a turtle and a mosquito but the turtle is a brain. Oh, come on, Chase. I fucking touched it. You don't have to be gross about it. Sorry. It's more than it already is. And it was, like, long and icky, and I'm kind of glad that Gwen wasn't able to see it when she grabbed it. Okay, I'm I back. Sorry about that. But, but that's irrelevant. Uh, Parvana, do you have any uh, rubbing alcohol? High proof, preferably. She would have brought her medical bag with her, and she definitely would have some antiseptic like that. Is it like a big bottle of it? It is a... It's a, it's a big bottle of it. Okay. And she puts it in Chase's hand, and before she lets it go, is just like, I might need some of this back. Chase looks at her like, I can't promise that. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Try though. Don't blame me if the tools get dirty. It most assuredly will not. So Chase kind of takes the big bottle of alcohol and he goes back to the suite. By the time Chase arrives at the suite, Anderson, you're going to notice that the uh, blonde uh, man who's looking relatively better for wear than the uh, large black man bleeding all over the place um, <laughs> is starting to stir from his sleep. Not waking up suddenly, just a low groan, and his head is starting to rise. Anderson uh, cocks the gun again and uh, trains it right on his head. You eject a perfectly good round and launch it across the floor while chambering a fresh round. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Oh, god damn it, Locus. All intentional, just so he hears the noise. <laughs> okay, well... Good, you, good cover. <laughs> you might want to pick that bullet up later. She she sees the, the round on the ground. <laughs> Thankful that the person isn't yet awake, she quickly grabs it with the bottom of her shoe and kind of rolls it underneath the heel of her of her shoe. Chase had missed this, thankfully, and it's not there to harass Anderson. As he walks in, he kind of sees the guy kind of getting his head up, and he pulls out of, uh, pulls off the table the other Chimera Rug shirt, and before the guy can wake up, he kind of, uh, he ties it around his head so that, you know, it's it's not so much a, like, blindfold as it is, like, a hood. You know, using the arms together and cinching it behind the head. No, no, can't have that. And Gwen obviously has followed Chase back in because she is, um, not very useful in any situation right now, but more useful in here than playing forensics. Well, as you uh, cinch the uh, shirt around uh, Marco's head, um, that seems to w sober and wake him up quick enough that he begins thrashing violently against his bindings. So Anderson just right quietly kind of says, wouldn't suggest doing that. The he sort of settles down after realizing he's not getting free of how well he's tied up. And you hear sort of a <sighs> huff. Chase uh, kind of steps back from where he was closer and goes, Good morning! Marco does not respond. Really? You're going to be that impolite? Would you prefer French? Russian? Gwen is quietly just hoping that the language that people decide on for conversation is one she can fucking understand. Ah, uh, the man speaks up in perfect Finnish. Oh! In no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I felt so useful for a millisecond. Fuck Same. you. Know. Same. Oh, God. No, he speaks up in much more practiced Russian than earlier and asks uh, Chase, who are you? Glenn can understand Russian, so I'm okay with this. Chase just kind of smiles. Kind of irrelevant in this situation, doesn't it? Does who I am really change your situation? You're right. It doesn't, the man replies in perfect English before blurting out something that nobody else in the room can particularly understand. It's a language that none of you know, although it's made of such sharp consonants and harsh vowels that it causes physical pain as the words leave the man's lips. Can I have a, re a reactive action? <laughs> uh, first, well, yeah, you can go ahead and have a reactive action. I splash the alcohol in his face. Well, Onto his hood. Waterboarding with alcohol. Uh, can I roll like innuendo? Does alcohol like, fumes into his throat. Would I be able to, like... <laughs> alcohol fumes induce. I'm sorry. His throat is what he said. The man sputters underneath his hood, and you can. I'm going to tell you right now. There is nothing you can roll that would. Uh, actually, there is one thing you could roll, but I don't think you have any points in it, Anderson. Let me check. Uh, a cult. Nope. Uh, 
Kahu, Mikas. Yes, and you don't have any points in that. Nope, nope. Okay. Too bad we don't have Rocket here to just sweep it all away with his 99 Cthulhu mythos. But you splash the alcohol in his face, and the man sputters underneath the mask and begins uh, coughing violently. Yeah, not pleasant, is it? And he kind of comes over and he kind of pours the the alcohol on both the men's head, just letting it rain down. Not like dump, but, you know, just kind of drizzling it all on the hood. <laughs> uh, both men thrash against their bindings now, trying to get away from the alcohol as much as they can with how little movement they've got. A quick question. We're just going to get straight into it, because um, I don't have a lot of time. And to be honest with you, you're starting to piss me off. And there's sort of the sound where cha there's sort of this really distinctive sound by anyone who's ever heard it. It's the sound of a lighter being flicked. Not lit, just the flint. <laughs> Striking. Who opened the case? Your mother. Samuel roars from underneath his hood. Yeah, it's not really the right answer. So, how long have you all been in the field? Are you experienced agents? You knew? I mean, obviously, uh, what's the acronym? UWM? Something Uber Weischer Ministrium? Neither men respond, but they continue to strain against their bindings as hard as they can. Listen, you're secondary to all this. I really don't need your intelligence. I really just would like some answers to just finish things up. But if you keep being rude, I'm literally going to make this very unpleasant for you. And there's the flicking sound of the striker again. Marco seems to, uh sees up at that noise and ceases to continue to struggle. On the other hand, Samuel manages to not quite free himself from his bindings, as he was very well tied down, as much as smash the chair that he has been bound to by sheer force of strength, and has thrown himself prone on the ground and is furiously trying to get free. Gwen is immediately going to close the distance and just fucking drop down onto his back and nail it in the back of the head once. She is not happy with this man. Anderson is uh, going to kind of just sit where she is. She was going to get up, but as soon as Gwen kind of drops onto him, she's like, well, all right, I guess that's handled. Go ahead and roll an unarmed attack. The uh, brawl isn't so much important as the damage. Okay, let's just don't fumble the brawl, because this man is still bound. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. I'm not trying to kill him. I'm not trying to kill well, him. Well, you can't impale with an unarmed, so you're lucky you in that sense. can't impale with an unarmed. She's very angry. Uh, not only do you kind of do the uh, people's elbow on this man, um, you're able to get a hold of him and stop his thrashing physically. As in, you've got this big black guy pinned to the floor with your body weight, and he is going nowhere. <laughs> I don't I don't think anyone realizes just how happy Gwen's brawls rolls have made me. Chase just kind of <coughs> gets down close to, to Samuel and says, Samuel, don't do this. Don't do this. We have too much time left. I don't want to have to accelerate my plans. Also, out of character. Pun. Uh, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I was... <laughs> In character, there's this this the the striking noise again. It's really close to to Samuel's head at this point. Not enough that it would ignite because alcohol fumes are not that flammable. Yeah, but, but menacing. menacingly loud. So, okay, we're gonna ask one more time because I think don't think you understand the the gravity of the situation that you've created. Who opened the case? Fucking Marco! Samuel sort of strained replies from underneath Gwen's body weight, and you immediately hear a word that, well, a phrase from uh, Marco that you don't necessarily recognize, but you know it's Russian, and you know it's very impolite about what he said about Samuel's mother. Gwen kind of dryly snickers because she understood. 
she is Chase got the gist. The most proficient in the uh, derogatory terms of the languages that she speaks. Yeah. Now, now, Marco, you had very specific orders, didn't you? Marco kind of shrinks a little in his chair, but doesn't immediately respond. Do you have any idea the kind of shit you've brought up? And in this situation, do you know what's going to happen here tonight? Anderson's still kind of in the dark here, so she's just like raising an eyebrow at Chase while simultaneously kind of glancing back and forth between Gwen and him, kind of being like, what the, what the fuck happened? Gwen just kind of gives her this shrug, like, just don't worry about it right now. Chase does point to the stack of papers on the desk if, if Anderson wants to look at them. They are in German. Marco responds to Chase in a voice that's barely a hiss and just says, yeah, we're fucking counting on it. So the Chimera Rug just covers? Once again, uh, Marco goes quiet. Although you can guess what his answer would actually be simply by his silence. So why did you tell Samuel here you're CIA? Because I hate to say it, but he seems like a perfect dupe. Who said we're CIA? Your friend. The one who also ratted you uh, out about the case. Did he lie? It was. It was really ineffective. But. You know, he doesn't seem like he's the most experienced hand you have here. How long did you realize that your editor had been corrupted? There's a pause and the head sort of tilts towards uh, Chase. What do you mean corrupted? We mean there was something literally living in his head. It decided to flee at the first chance that it could. We dealt with it. Both men go remarkably still. A mask? Here? One of ours? Samuel just kind of ineffectively shrugs from underneath Gwen. You know, I have to admit, this is not my, this wasn't my first choice of an assignment. In fact, honestly, uh, I'm kind of running double duty here. So if you all want to fill me in here, it would do a lot to help your current situation. All right. All right. All right. Marco uh, says, as Samuel gets real quiet underneath Gwen. Anderson still has the gun trained on the one underneath Gwen. Well, actually on the one that Gwen is not on top of. Yeah, she's got Samuel taken care of. Yes, yeah, Samuel's taken care of. Uh, Gwen is currently like a big golden belt has appeared around her waist, naming her the uh, <laughs> WWF champion. Anyways, um, but World Marco, Wildlife Fund. Yes, absolutely. Because she punched all those bears. She's been punching a lot of bears. I mean, if, her if they haven't had the lawsuit yet, were they a thing at that point? I don't think they were. I don't know. Oh, anyways, anyways. Marco sighs deeply. You know where uh, UWM? I mean, you had no attempt at sanitizing your records. It's really pretty plain. I'd actually call it a false flag if not for the fact that uh, you all are cryptic and backwards as I'd expect. We're here to try to contain, not destroy contain just keeping an eye on the local population that's what all the equipment's for you can see chase kind of well anderson and, and gwen can both see chase kind of frown this is not good enough what population if you know about us, you know that the locals are deep ones. Or at least co 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 uh, colluding, he seems to struggle with the word, colluding with the deep ones. We're aware. It's a unique strain, something we haven't seen before. Been observing it. So, 
you bugged us. That's that's actually what made you in a sense. Did you also take our spark plugs? Couldn't risk you getting away if you were with Karyoteka or the other the the mast. Well, I'll tell you one thing, we do have the world's best interest in mind. I will tell you that right now, and don't worry, we're not Karyoteka. But, just to humor me, where are those spark plugs? They'd be in my room. Check my, uh, uh my, uh, actually, did they already get his, somebody already got his keys, didn't they? Yeah, I did. Okay. The room's unlocked. Someone could go in it if they wanted to. The doors are all closed because Chase isn't dumb and leaves doors open. <laughs> yeah. They're in my key room. I've stored them in my, uh, in my suitcase. It's, a, it's in the closet. You brought Chinese weapons here, which doesn't bother me. Actually, in a sense, pretty good choice. My question is, you brought three automatic weapons to potentially contain a unique strain of deep ones? Where is the rest of your cash? Offshore. We've been in pretty regular radio contact with them. That's good. When are they planning to check in? Hmm. Marco takes a moment to think about it. Probably two hours after dawn? Chase nods. Have you reported about us already? That we've made you, yes. Well, not that we've made you, that we've had suspicion. Didn't have anything hard to go on until you decided to ambush us. Well, you could have just asked. The... Used to, the our, our organizations used to have fairly decent relations. What changed? The masked changed been hard to tell friend from foe since then. And the masks are those bug things, huh? It's difficult to explain, but yes, to simplify it. Anderson is once again just looking at Chase, like squinting her eyes, and you can see within her face just this what the fuck is going on type of look. What does this have to do with, um, insert frequency here from the listening post, uh, kilohertz? Marco pauses and thinks about it for a moment, and then says, I have no idea what you're talking about. See, we were doing so well! Oh, he flicks the lighter. You can see uh, Marco sort of shrink away from the noise as much as do, he can. Do you know why burning people at the stake was so effective, Marco? You're German, right? But what part? I'm Austrian. Austrian? Well, there you go. You should know as much as anyone, then. Um, you all, and the Germans, all the Holy Roman Emperor, you burnt a lot of witches. Do, do you know why that was such an effective punishment? I know you're going to tell me. I am. Do, do you know what killed you when you were burned at the stake? Marco's silent. See, a lot of people think it's the heat. They're under this misguided thought that heat can kill you that quickly. See, the thing is, it really takes a long time. Your body's a beautiful insulator. Uh, it really takes a long time for the heat to kill you. But the thing that really kills you is you suffocate to death. See, you're surrounded by fire, and the fire draws all the air, including physically drawing the air out of your lungs. It's worse if you're tied to a stake, or your arms are behind your back, or, oh, I don't know, someone's sitting on your spine. Um... But once the fire starts drawing the air away from it, God damn! Well, he interrupted me. Finally pipes up from the, uh, floor. No, no. See, that's rude. Let me finish. See, it's not the lack of oxygen that immediately kills you. 
You've got a good... I mean, you all can hold your breath a long time, right? Probably three, four minutes. See, it's during that time that you have no oxygen. <laughs> it's during that time when you have, when you have no oxygen that um, <laughs> your body begins to cook. And you're awake and conscious of it the entire time. But you can't relax, see? You're stuck, gasping for air. It's, it's kind of like when you're drowning, but your skin is literally starting to boil. It's, it's been considered one of the most inhumane ways to die in human history. See, bleeding, eh, it's just part of life. You're going to lose blood, you lose oxygen, your brain goes first. In this case, your brain stays around for all of it. It's, it's really mechanically interesting, and, and that's always been something I've been very good at, is the mechanical process of things. I think you should realize that instead of being tied to a stake, what you're literally sitting in is fumes right now. You can probably already tell it's hard to get a full breath. But if that were to light up, it won't just draw the oxygen out. That literal vacuum in front of your face will literally suck the air out of your lungs under pressure. Have you ever imagined what that feels like? At this, Marco says only a single word. But again, it's not a word that you particularly understand, and as Chase kind of loses himself in the monologue, um, I'm going to go ahead. Do, 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 do. Why? Oh, that should not be a fail. Okay, that's supposed to be 55. I accidentally got rid of <laughs> fives. That is actually a... um. An extreme success. Chase, you're going to need to roll a willpower. Well, power. Also, what was the verdict on the psychology rolls? Oh, they're both lying out of their ass. Okay. Uh, that's a success, but unfortunately it doesn't beat a six, Jay. No. A for effort. Um, let's see here. Jay, would you do me a favor and roll 1d6, please? All right. As the uh, word escapes from um, Marco's lips, you un actually begin to understand that what he said was the word suffer in a language older than anyone present, older than the human genome, older than perhaps our understanding of time itself. And as he says that word suffer, your body is racked with horrible agony. Your muscles seem to catch fire. Your breath hitches in your throat. It's excruciating pain. No physical harm. No actual physical damage. But suffer is a good word for the agony now being inflicted on you for three rounds. At the same time, from beneath those shirts, you can see things start to bulge as creatures attempt to rise from their fleshy prisons and free themselves. On both guys? On both guys. Oh, good. Gwen just takes one fucking look at this shit under and she goes, you know what, I've had about enough of this. Let's see here. What's a tiny little one sitting in a chair? Oh dear, who do we lose? Angie, she'll be back. Oh, okay. What? Why are there suddenly three? Four? Why are there four? Hang on, I'm moving things around. But you see underneath the uh, shirts that are um, holding them in, you can see figures start to move violently in a way that a face could not move. Okay, Anderson is just gonna, like, she's already got her gun out. She's had it trained on these guys. She goes for the one that Gwen is not like standing next to the one she wasn't okay. just on top of. Please and thank you. And uh, aims and uh, shoots. It's going to be the Walter MPK. Okay, go ahead. Open fire. Fire a shot. That's oh, a good wow. hit. And that's eight damage. Okay. 
does the damage that I already did on this guy carry over? Yes, it should. Okay, so oh, he was okay. at. Hang on one sec. I I just realized I ha didn't have it on the token. Hang on. I, I did. Also, we can't see bars. Yeah. He's got four hit points left. Okay. Oh, we can't see bars, by the way. I will fix that in just a moment. Okay. So I will be adjusting that turn order. Da, 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 da. Okay, so he's got four hit points left. Yeah, let's... I mean, that more depends on you than me. Okay. Uh, bar three, C. So... Based on my super, super earlier rolls, about how much longer would it take Parvana to get everything else she needs from looking over this stuff? Uh, if you want to be in the room during this combat, you can. You That's appropriate. I'm going to say that she's going to come in in the middle of it. Okay. Chase, you currently do not have a firearm drawn. <laughs> you are suffered, so you're going to be at your base. Uh, I don't want to see your token. 70. 70, thank you. Sage, you have a firearm drawn, so you're at 95. Gwen, you're at 70 still. Mm -hmm. Brigitte, what is your uh, dexterity, please? Wait, are we talking to me? Yes, you. What's your dexterity? Uh, dexterity is 40. Okay, so you okay. are at 90. Uh, Parvana, what's your dexterity again, please? My dexterity is 70. Okay. All right. Let me just add one more turn. 65. Okay. All right. Only like all of us do. Uh, Except me. Sage is already gone. She opened fire as a reactive action. Or, uh, Brigitte, Brigitte, Anderson. Sorry, my bad. So, Sage, your turn. You've witnessed, uh, you see these things creepy crawling inside their shirts. As well as one of them has just eaten a bullet. Okay, so that'll be this one right here. That'll be what used to be Marco. Hi, Marco. Hopefully. You miss. You did Marco it. stays. Sorry, I was trying to be polite. Okay. Uh, Birgit, you've already had your turn. Parvana, you're up next. You just heard a shotgun blast coming from the room. Actually, you've also heard a uh, submachine gun blast. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Caution to the wind. She's going to get there, uh, rush the rest of the way, open the door to see what's going on. <laughs> You see what's happening. It's not good. <laughs> um, and Sage would be right in front of her. Mm -hmm. And uh, who who has weapons ready? Sage, Anderson, Chase, but he's not looking so good. And Gwen has these guns ready to go. So fury. All right. Uh. Parvana also, is good. like on the sky, but it's not layered, right? Yeah, hang on. Let me see if I can bounce you up to the top layer. There you Glenn go. Glenn only tops. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Parvana is going to try to see if she can figure out what's wrong with Chase. Okay. Go ahead and roll medicine for me. Actually, no. Roll Cthulhu Mythos for me. That's actually going to be much more appropriate. That'll actually let you do something about Ooh! that. Wow. Okay. Roll 1d6 for me, please. Super doctor. 
you're able to recognize a spell when you see one, and not only are you able to recognize it, but using some of the uh, particular spellcraft entombed in the book, you're able to clear what he said, what is spelling Chase off of him. He is no longer suffering. He can act normally now. MVP Pargana. Thank God. My hero. Uh, mark thought on your experience thing. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I can't mark Cthulhu one. Mythos. Yeah, Cthulhu Mythos has its own unique right. uh, track. Oh, I didn't know that. Excuse um, me, my characters it, always roll <laughs> extreme successes on Cthulhu Mythos when it's most necessary. Yeah, I will say, though, since you rolled a freaking two, if you want, you can add two to your Cthulhu Mythos at the cost of two sanity, of course. I will. Okay. All right. Gwen. Um, Harvana kind of, upon doing this, just kind of stumbles back a little, little bit herself, kind of does that same press to the temple she's been doing the past little bit, grabs the bridge of her nose as kind of information just comes together in her mind, and Sage and Chase could just hear her mumble, just like, and now it comes. <sighs> mm. Gwen, you're up. Uh, she's gonna just fucking all out punch this guy's head down into the ground, because she has got him pinned, he's still mostly restrained, and she has already taken a sizable chunk out of his health, so she's just gonna try and finish the job here. Okay, go right ahead. No! <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, in his thrashing, you're not able to really get a hold. But, since he is still technically restrained, he can't fight back, or really attempt to dodge, so while you failed, you haven't been punished for it. Chase, you're up. So, I'm going to be spending a gold coin. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. I'm going to be drawing and firing in the same turn, but I'm at point-blank range. Okay, so that's going to give you a, a bonus dice, all things told. It is. Chase now, grabs... What are you firing at? I'm going to tell you. Chase grabs something out of the front of his pants that he's been holding on to since they landed. And he oh. says... Fuck you. Pulls the flare gun out of his pants and fires at right. at Marco's head, which should still be completely soaked in alcohol. Yes, including sir. anything that passed through. <laughs> yep. Okay. Success. That is a success. That's also it a success, a but curse, that's okay. Oh the first God. one is accurate. Fucking damage? Wow. This 1d3 continuing burn damage. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, that's not going to be super necessary, though, because I'm telling you right now, that flare lodges itself in Marco's head, and that squirming sack, that was the squirming Khmer Rouge shirt, ceases to move as the fire spreads and the entire body goes limp, killing both these motherfuckers. What was the baby? Uh, the head. Oh. Chase is still prone. He is not getting up. Okay. Gonna need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Gwen, from under the body, you've got more or less pinned. You can see the uh, the shirt weakened now by a rapidly pooling uh, the rapidly uh, collecting ooze from the disembodied body. No, it'd be the disembodied head? Disenheaded head. Disenheaded body? <laughs> Decapitated Anyways, body. The body. Uh, this thing pushes the one that its... hit the floor? Yeah. Well, the one that God damn it. The one that Gwen's got on the floor. Um through the fabric pushes. Oh, so up... Gw so Gwen's body as well too. Two plural, two bodies have been oh before. <laughs> Are we allowing this? Are we simply going to let the bodies hit the floor? <laughs> oh God, we're idiots. Anderson takes the gun, puts it in her mouth, and fires. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Gwen God! Wants to take it from her and do the same. And Anderson shot herself. She's drowning in a pool of her own blood. Oh my god. 
Come on. <laughs> All right, guys, we're we're 15 minutes over. Let's finish this combat because I just was realized that. Golden, Anyways, um, you actually can see the uh, shapeless or not the shapeless necessarily the uh, head, the strange peculiar brain and insect head push its way through the fabric using the uh, caustic blood of the body. And it flies. Parvana, you can actually confirm that this creature will fly on wings that it should not be able to fly on, almost like a bumblebee. Um, uh, sorry, I made a bee movie joke and my brain immediately shut down as a result. <laughs> Good. It does not uh, turn and fight, though, as it realizes sort of the stacked situation against it. It's going to move high along the ceiling as fast as it can out into the hallway and attempt to escape since Parvana so kindly opened the door for it. Man, all I can think of is... Is it still alive? Or is it good as dead? It's still alive. And it's going to attempt to break free of its bindings. Unfortunately, the bindings are so well struck that even though it's a built able through sheer mindless strength to break through them, it hurts itself in the process and takes one point of damage. But now it is wow, okay, um completely fucked that up. Uh, it, ha it has hurt itself in the process, but now it is free of its bindings. Wait, why is- Do I get to counter that at all? Where the head is, like, no. in the hallway now? Okay. Because it flew away. Oh, it's I missed now. that. Sage, you're up. Uh, is Wait, it a new I turn order? To... It is a new turn order. Chase has a weapon drawn. That's right, you do have a weapon drawn. Alright, so let me, real heat. quick. Hang on one sec. Uh, I need to... Chase is at 120 since he's got a gun drawn. I just Anderson need to reorder the things. Hang on. Something. I'm. Yes, okay. I know she's got something drawn. I've got her in the torn order as having something drawn. Alright, Chase, you're up first. Uh, can... 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 Interject super quick. Before, as that thing was flying out of the space, Gwen would yell at someone to go catch it. The end. Carry on. Can Chase just literally drop the lighter onto the body? That's now broken free. <laughs> Yes. Gwen's still, on Gwen's still kind of on it, is the thing. I mean, he'll shout, get off, and, <laughs> and toss the lighter. Okay, yeah, you can do that. Uh, that's going to be a throw roll. Oh, these are where these go wrong. This is not going to go well. Keep in mind, there's that it's wonderful stack of papers fire. that we probably want. To... Alright, yeah, that's uh, probably a bad choice. No, I have a stack here. If I, if I land a punch, I can finish this thing off. Alright, I guess I won't do that. Chase will stand up and kind of turn and, uh, I guess switch weapons. <laughs> That's my action. Okay. okay. <laughs> I will switch to the pistol. Okay. Not gonna shoot. Alright. Now, Sage, you can go. Uh, it's out in the hall. It's about to vanish down the corner. It, it's making a run for it as fast as it can. You'd be able to take a shot at it, yes. If you want to go after it, you could step out in the hall real quick and take a shot at it. Alright, that's an extreme success. It is going to attempt to dodge. It does not. Uh, go ahead and so, damage. That's, uh, max damage plus... Oh, that's max damage. that's 4d6 plus max damage for 4d6. Um... What? Minimum range shotgun. Impale. Yeah. Wait, shotguns can't impale, can they? No, they can't, but that is... <laughs> oh, well, still. Either way, that's chunky salsa all over your ceiling. We are just repainting this hotel. In red. <laughs> okay. Anderson, you're up. Uh, so, 
Anderson is going to see these things kind of like, um, uh, she's going to see the body start to break out. And at that point, she's going to stand up and like basically put the barrel of the Walter and PK right against the chest and just unload. Go right ahead. You'll get a bonus dice for that. Okay, roll again. <laughs> Surprisingly, I lost it for a second. <laughs> okay. You do. Wow, you managed to only do two damage. Yeah, I'm not too. Apparently, you know. Can do a lot from afar, but not. Gwen's going to do two damage. Gwen's going to come in here and just turn this into chunky salsa too with her fair fist. Okay, Gwen, your turn. I say that, and I'm going to immediately fuck it up. But yeah, she's just going to do the same thing. Just try and finish this shit. Oh my god! What did you? I told you, you keep screwing yourself. I do. It's Does thrashes, and you can't get a good. Yeah, it's something like that. It is. It's the second ninety in a row. Wow. Okay, Parvana. Help, my fists are broken. Just the... Uh... The hitbox on this thing is remarkable. <laughs> Alright, so... The little, one, the little one out there is toasted, and the only one left is the big one. Um, Parvana is just gonna run over to the other one, which, it's not on fire, right? No. Yep. Is the fire on the other one in danger of spreading? Yes, it is. Oh, fuck me. All right. It is a flaming corpse on the ground, and it started to catch the carpet where some of the uh, alcohol spilled a little bit. Oh, good. Um, and Gwen looks in control now, right? I mean, she's, she's not been lighting a punch. I mean, she, yeah, she hasn't been doing damage, but this thing also hasn't been damaging her whatsoever. Fuck it. Parvon is just gonna, if everything's, like, everything's lined up, she's just gonna run up, try to just swift boot it in the head, and then help Gwen up. Go right ahead. Head. Well, it's got a head, it just doesn't have a face. Oh, gotcha, alright. It's been melon bollard. Uh, unfortunately, it's thrashing around too much for your boots to find purchase. This is turning into a fucking ridiculous shit show. At the same time, since one point you attacked it, it's going to attempt to fight back. I think I have the wrong character sheet open. No, I don't. Unfortunately, it can't fight back. It's still kind of bound up by Gwen. <laughs> That being said, as it turn its turn comes around, it's going to attempt to wrap its arms around Gwen and give her that big old melon baller kiss. Can I retaliate with a brawl? You can retaliate with a brawl. <laughs> there you go. You Suck beat it. the fuck out of it. Dick it is dead. Shit. Alrighty. And I mean, that was almost in character. Gwen would utter a lot of profanities because she is sick and tired of the shit crawling out of people's faces and trying to hug her bullshit in one night. Well, you won. Do -do -do -do. We won. Well, get the Gwen intelligence. Up, we need to get out of here. Gwen All would right. stand up, would Hold up. Grab a blanket off the bed and throw it over the fucking burning corpse and try to snuff out that shit. Okay. I think that's where we're going to end it, though, tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we've gone way past time. I actually shouldn't have started that combat. I just looked at the time. Um, thank you for coming tonight, everybody. Could thank I... you for everyone who tuned in. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Since I'm not going to be around for a bit, could I pre-narrate something that Pravana is going to do? Please, go right ahead. Uh, because at some point, uh, when she gets the chance, because, of course, in this coming time, I'm just going to say that she's going to, after this, quietly just almost, like, she, ever since the moment she kind of cleared Chase's head, she's just been kind of silent and just kind of keeping, like, just curt answers. So she will tidy up everybody who needs tidying up doctoring wise but whenever the next time they go to get rest um parvana is going to take whatever is left of the uh 
whatever is left of that uh, rubbing alcohol uh, when uh, take a little bit of gauze from her kit and when she's alone she's going to set it out take the knife they found look at it just look at it for a little bit and just say to herself well if we need to know anything we'll need to replicate results sterilize it and cut her own palm with it before wrapping it up and going to sleep. Oh, boy. That's quite the bedtime story, Parvana. That is a bedtime story. <laughs> and we will deal with that on another evening of The Shield Against Midnight. Thank you all again for tuning in. And please tune in on Sunday for Voices in the Wilderness, a 13th Age game which I assume will be at its regular time at 5 p.m. EST? Yes. Awesome. Thank you again, everybody, and have a lovely evening. Good night.